Hello friends, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Sadaggi, Associate Professor of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. Friends, we are into module 9. This module is entitled as Every Man, written and prepared by Dr. Gargi Talapatro, who teaches English at Bhavanipur Education Society, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. Friends, in this module, we are going to learn the relevance of every man. Every man as a morality play, we are to learn the different aspects of every man, the thematic pattern, the structural composition and its relevance with associated hyperlinks, so that we can have an easy understanding of medieval English plays with special reference to morality play tradition. Friends, about general introduction to this particular module, we may note down that medieval English drama was mostly allegorical in nature. Allegorical means there are twofold meanings, of course, there are symbolical overtone as well. The beginning with the mysteries and miracles, dra drama started evolving into the shaping the shape of morality plays, also the interludes. Emergence towards the end of the 15th century, the moralities dealt with abstractions like evils, evil properties in man, like good themes in man. The Christian doctrine of sin, redemption, punishment still held strong in these plays, but the manifestation of some of them are in microcosmic in representation. Of five major morality plays in medieval England, every man stands out as perhaps the most significant of the lot. Let us introduce to the play. Morality play every man is dated around 1495 AD and ascribed to an anonymous author. That means no one can claim solely as the author of every man. It is said to have been derived from a Dutch play Elkajik. Please forgive me for my pronunciation in Dutch. Whether the play is a translation of the original Dutch version remains highly debated issue. <coughs> However, the content of the play very different from other moralities, perhaps retains an equal significance as food for thought even in these changed times space across the countries and generations. Friend, in this particular play we are going to see how abstractions play an important role. Characters are persons, but persons in abstraction. The central conflict of the play is good versus evil and the triumph of good over evil. Now, let us see through the textual evidence. The messenger, the play begins as a messenger comes and addresses the audience about the content of the play. This forms a sort of prologue to the play. Prologue means speech short, enacted or performed or uttered at the beginning of a play, which talks about the thematic context of the play. He adds that scene is tempting, but all that human beings indulge in though the span of their lives as sinful pleasures finally fed off as the soul embarks upon the ultimate journey towards the Almighty. Friends, then comes death to every man. God sends death to every man. The introduction of the messenger is followed by the speech of God, because God stands for all good things in life and manner. 
He speculates upon the existence of human kind who live their lo live life lost in worldly pleasure and forsake their creator. God concludes that such deviation from the path of virtue occurs because man lives his life without any fear and summons death. His mighty messenger to go to every man, the protagonist. The protagonist is every man. He asks death to tell every man that he must take a pilgrimage in his journey through life and prepare himself to meet God at the end of affairs. Then death meets every man. Death then spots every man lost in the wave of fleshly lusts and his treasure. He introduces himself as one who no man spareth. That means no man can be out of death. Entrapped in the glory of sinful existence, every man tries to bribe death with a thousand pounds, asking him to defer his master matter till another day. It is now that death reminds every man that life given to him by his creator is a short journey. All the material wealth he acquires during his span of earth is transient and it will evaporate in one day. He tells the latter that death is the power which comes and takes away all human things. Every man pleads death to allow him a companion in his journey. To this death replies, he may do it only if someone agrees to accompany him. Then every man seeks help from fellowship. Friends, don't be misguided with the names because every man and fellowship all are titled, projected, per abstract personifications. It is a dialogue between fellowship and every man. The former asks the protagonist that the reason for his sorrow and tries to comfort him with promises of togetherness even in a journey to hell. Everyone believes him and reveals the situation to fellowship. On learning the reality of every man having summoned by death, fellowship forsakes him forever. He states that he would accompany every man only in attaining worldly pleasures that last through life. Friend, every man meets kindred and cushion. Having been thus forsaken by fellowship, every man then turns assistance to kindred and cushion. They too refuse to accompany him in this journey. While kindred tells him that he must undertake the journey alone, Cushion states, Trust not to me, for so God me stupid. I will deceive you in your most need. And every man is left alone on the stage. Then every man turns to goods <coughs> and reaches for health. In this particular context, every man recollects that all his life he had loved riches and therefore decides to approach his goods and riches to now to assist him in the hour of his need. In the dialogue which follows between the two, goods makes it clear that he would keep the company of every man only in this world. He says that he cannot help every man settle his accounts in the front of God because the love for goods is contrary to the love for the creator. Then the most important thing, every man remembers good deeds. At this point, they thought that good deeds occurred to him. He goes to her and asks to accompany him. Good deeds, he recollects, so weak that she can neither go nor speak, owing his ne negligence towards her. In the dialogue which follows between every man and good deeds, the letter responds to every man from the ground and adds, Thy sin hath me sore bound that I can't steer. Good deeds 
leads every man to knowledge and confusion. Unable to go with him, good deeds, however, does not abandon every man. She introduces him to her sister, knowledge, who would accompany and assist him in estimating the final account of his lifetime to be presented to God. Knowledge, in turn, leads every man to the house of the holy man, confessing, having learned from every man that he had come with knowledge for my redemption, confession hands him precious jewel of penance. Accompanied by knowledge, he is asked to scourge himself from the jewel of penance. Then, knowledge and good deeds assist every man. After the act of penance, the good deeds of every man acquire strength and enough to rise up, walk up to him. Knowledge hands to every man a garment of contrition, wet with his tears, with will earn him mercy of the Almighty. His good deeds asks him to call upon three persons of great might, who would also go with him in this journey, namely strength, discretion and beauty. While knowledge empowers him, five wits at his counsellors. Strengthen those with a performed self, after having gone through penance of his previous sins, every man is now ready to undertake take the pilgrimage death had asked him to at the beginning of the play. Now friends, the final journey of every man. The play concludes as every man reaches his grave, which signifies the end of his journey through the world. As he is ready to leave or part, he is gradually abandoned by beauty and strength. By beauty and strength, they are also abstract personifications. Discretion and five wits, knowledge stays with him till the end of his life, but only good deeds accompanies him into the grave. The message is very clear. The message intended becomes clear. Though one may be blessed with qualities such as beauty, strength, power of discretion, all these disappear as man approaches to the end of his life. It is finally the good deeds performed by a man which accompany man in his afterward and enable him to present before good, sorry, present before God a justified account of his journey through life. Friends, now we are at the end of the play every man. Towards the end of the play every man, there is an angel who announces the soul of every man has reached the heavenly sphere because of his singular virtue. At the end of the play, there enters a doctor to pronounce the moral of the play in the form of an epilogue. He emphasizes upon the transient nature of worldly pleasures and reminds one all how man should retain his good deeds and qualities and strengthen them through the journey of life. It is in order to accept are accepted by God within his kingdom and be blessed with his mercy and pity. Friends, there are also later adaptations of every man. By later adaptations means there were interpolations and people later on adapted to and attached to the text. Universal in its appeal, the play Everyman has not rema remained confined to the history of medieval English literature. It has been staged repeatedly and completely in 19, 20th century as well. The first recorded modern performance of Everyman is by William Poyle in, the ju in July 1901. A noted English actor, well known 
for his adaptation of Shakespearean classics, Poel turned to every man when he was mourning the recent death of his mother. Another very important instance of reinterpreting every man on stage is provided by the adaptation every man in the mall as an attack on American consumerism performed in a mall backdrops used in a play where, where, where real shops kindred and cousin were portrayed as clowns who placed on the down escalators and could never manage to reach every man for assistance, while the man, main action of the play represented multiple every mans, male and female, dealing with diversity of multiple deaths as the universal finality of finite existence. So, on the whole, here is a brief portrayal of every man as an important morality play during the Middle English period. And by the time you have understood the implication of every man as a text. A brief glimpse at the performance history of every man confirms on us its stability and its influence in the generations to come. It is through the realization of every man as any individual who lives in this world without fear of God and consciousness of death that play acquires an universal appeal and tone. Though emphasizing upon the theological beliefs and context of the medieval society, the play has a, re has a relevant role to the readers, actors and audience in the ages to come. Friends, for useful links, you may look into the screen. Thank you. Hi, I wanted to uh, talk to you for a few minutes about the medieval morality play *Every Man*. Well, <laughs> there were two kind. There were two kinds of plays: uh, the uh, morality play and the miracle play. Miracle play was usually uh, what miracles from the Bible, and um, they were presented by uh, common by common people, usually at uh, peasant fairs. Uh, the, uh, the company of, of tradesmen would get together and practice and do this play, maybe using uh, an ox cart for uh, for a stage. And uh, the local the local people in the village would take parts in the play. Uh, we have an example of that in our text in this, the second shepherd's play about the, uh, the birth, it's partly about the birth of Christ, but it's also partly about stealing a sheep and uh, hiding a sh hiding a sheep under the covers and uh, pretending it's a baby. But that's the second shepherd's play. Every man is a morality play, and which is a contest between uh, virtues and vices. And every man is a play which everyone immediately understands it. Um, I saw this uh, presented by a company of, of school children in a church in Stratford uh, on Avon years and years ago. Immedi immediately understood what it was about for hundreds of years now. People watching this play have been saying, Oh, I, I get that play. Um, and what's it about? Well, every man is a title, so who's it about? It's about every man. And in this play, death comes to every man and tells him, okay, every man, it's time for you to come with me. And every man, every man says, no, wait a minute, I'm not ready. And uh, every man tries to get together all of his, uh, all of his friends and all of his stuff to take with him into uh, into the next into the next world, and so he tries to. And all of these uh, are represented by um, 
by uh, characters, by people dressed up in costumes like goods is probably dressed up like a big bag of money, uh, probably with a, with a pound sign on it or something like that. Um, and he asks, goods, will you uh, come with me to the next world? The goods says, no, I'm sorry, I'm clanking here. I, I, I can't really go with you. Um, and he asks um, his relatives, his, his, uh, his friends and relatives, and, they say, and friends say, oh, go, every man, glad to see you. Uh, where are you going now? No, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't go that way today. And um, uh, cousin tells him, oh, oh, you know, every man I go, but you know, I've got a pain in my great toe, he tells us. It gets down to, he's asking um, his own, his own strength, strength, will you come with me? And beauty, will you come with me? My, my, uh, my uh, physical, physical, phys my physical beauty, rather. If we uh, take a look at what happens when beauty and strength are on their way to death with every man around um, lines um, 785 of the play, um, uh, every man says, uh, he's starting to feel weak, and he says, alas, I'm so, uh, I'm so faint, I can't, I can't stand, he, he, tells, he tells his friend uh, strength strength and beauty. Um, friends, let, uh, let, let us not turn again to this land. We won't be uh, coming back here, not for all the world's gold, for into this grave, every man tells them, into this grave I creep uh, and turn to earth and there to sleep. And beauty says, what? Into the grave, alas? And uh, every man says, uh, yes, yea, there shall ye consume more and less. There sh you shall be consumed more, uh, more and less. And beauty says, and uh, in the grave, what should I smother there? And uh, every man says, uh, yes, by my faith, and never more appear uh, to this world live. No more we shall. But in heaven, before the highest Lord of all, he tells them. And beauty says, oh, oh, oh I, um, I cross out all of this. Adieu, goodbye, bye, St. John. I, I take my, my tape in my lap, and I'm gone. Every man, what, beauty, whither, whither are you going? And beauty says, peace, I'm deaf, can't hear you. Uh, I look not behind me, I'm walking off. Um, not in thou wouldst give me all the gold in thy chest. I wouldn't go with you and excess beauty at that point. So strength is standing there. And every man says, Alas, where to may I trust? Beauty goes away fast. Um, she promised with me to live and die. And strength says, um, Every man, I will thee also forsake and deny. Uh, thy uh, game likest me not at all. Why then? He says to his, all of his, his friends, uh, Will you forsake me all? Um, and they all, they all leave him. Now, the only one that goes with him, he can't take with him knowledge, he can't take goods, he can't take strength. Uh, what can you take to the grave? What can you take with you in, into the next world? There's only one that can, accompanies him all the way. Good deeds. And his good deeds are very weak, uh, very small, very shriveled, but nonetheless, good deeds is the one that accompanies him to the grave. And as I said, it's a play that almost everyone recognizes in, in a way. Uh, you imagine uh, simple peasants looking at this thing when it was first produced, uh, probably back uh, 1485, which is uh, 80 years after Chaucer, and it's a good deal less sophisticated, obviously, than Chaucer. Um, this is not that long before Shakespeare. And uh, you imagine the peasants uh, out of the country fair watching this thing, uh, death coming for every man and feeling a little bit chilly in their hearts because they know, they know what this play is about. Good deeds. So I suppose according to this, we should all go out and, good, uh, and do some good deeds. Do one later today. You'll feel better and it'll accompany you into the next world. Okay. Well, um, I... This is my favorite of all of the uh, mystery and mystery and morality plays. I think you may see why. Thank you.